going on everyone so as we inch closer to the trade deadline uh, we will see what the results are right DeJounte Murray seems to be the big play that the Lakers are looking to try to acquire um, they need to find a third team uh, based on the reports both sides are kind of scouring the league try to find some expiring contracts in order to go and move D'Angelo Russell to that team and then the Atlanta Hawks would get the expiring deal plus whatever Laker assets. Maybe they could even turn D'Lo into another asset, uh, even if it's just some second rounds or something that they could send uh, to Atlanta, right? So that's the idea. That's the goal. Uh, Atlanta doesn't necessarily have to trade DeJounte Murray right now. Uh, they could wait. They could be patient. They could wait until the offseason, all right? They're not winning anything anyway. Uh, so the way that they look at it is like, hey, we don't necessarily need to do anything. You guys figure it out. Maybe we'll get the deal done. Obviously, the Lakers see a lot of value in DeJounte Murray as they actively continue to try to pursue him. Um, he does make sense to some degrees. I do have my concerns about fit, but in, in, a, in a vacuum, right? The idea of like an athletic guard, it could be a point of attack. Uh, you know, he was an all-defensive guy. Can he get back to even any type of resemblance to that? A guy that if he can continue to shoot 40 plus percent from three, that would be huge. Guy that can hit clutch shots down the stretch. Uh, he's a great scorer, especially in the pull-up uh, game. Struggles finishing around the rim, uh, but gives you a real playmaker. Also would be a nice piece uh, going forward post-LeBron, right? Uh, their big questions are, is LeBron going to leave after this season? Supposedly, uh, based on reports, the Lakers and LeBron haven't had any contract conversations, which, I mean, LeBron does that all the time, right? He wants to keep pressure on the front office. Uh, on top of that, you know, he he wants to focus on the season. We'll deal with that when the time comes. I don't really think LeBron's going to leave. Uh, I said it last go around. I just, he's here for other reasons besides just basketball. Uh, but the Lakers still need to do something. And look, Kyle Lowry was just traded uh, to the Charlotte Hornets, so maybe that is now in play for the Lakers. Maybe the Lakers could get a uh, Kyle Lowry to, to send. We'll see. Time will tell, right? We'll figure it out. We'll see how this all plays out. But another option is the Lakers, based on reports, may just stand pat and go target a Donovan Mitchell and Trey Young in the offseason. Now, look, Donovan Mitchell would be an absolute home run, in my opinion, Problem is, is there's no guarantee that he even becomes available, right? Now, ideally, that would be great, right? Ideally, it's like, man, if you could get a Donovan Mitchell, and the idea is something that I've talked about here uh, before, which is like, oh, if the Lakers wait until the offseason, they would have three first-round picks, uh, and that just would give them a lot more leverage to potentially go make a big play, a big move. Right? They could trade basically a first and a pick swap to go get a DeJounte Murray, but if Donovan Mitchell becomes available, they could trade three firsts and you know whatever else they have, go get a Donovan Mitchell, and now they got Mitchell, LeBron, and AD, and then post LeBron James, you'd still have Mitchell and Anthony Davis, which would just be a great structure. I love the idea of Donovan Mitchell. Problem is, is one, you may not have DeAndre Russell to trade. Uh, two... Who's to say Donovan Mitchell even wants to come to the Lakers and play with the Lakers? Now, you know, we're the Lakers. Who doesn't want to play? But you'd be surprised, right? Especially if he goes to the Lakers, he may be looking at it as like, okay, I might be the third option there. Right? Like, what, what's going to happen in that regard? Right? It, it, you know, does he really want to play with an Anthony Davis and a LeBron James? You know, some guys do, absolutely. But a guy with the stature of Donovan Mitchell where he's basically been the one guy everywhere he's been, does is he okay with taking that leap? Now, if the Lakers could get Donovan Mitchell, to me, that would just be a grand slam, right? He's still 27 years old. Um, the other thing is, too, is that, like, do the Cavs re-sign him, right? Cleveland's been very good, and that's without Garland and without Mobley. So they very well could just convince Donovan Mitchell to re-sign, stick around. Maybe they say, hey, if you stay, we'll trade Darius Garland, and they look to move him. All right, so there's just so many different variables that go into a potential Donovan Mitchell. Now, obviously, if the Cavs can't get an extension done going into the offseason, then it is more likely than not that they're going to make him available because they're not going to want to lose him for nothing. 
because he has one more year, which would be next year, on his contract, and then he can, if he wants to, become a free agent and then go explore free agency and get signed somewhere else, or he could just demand a trade, request a trade, and kind of force his way where he wants to go. Now, if that's the Lakers that he wants to go to, great, right? But if it's not, then... You know, you you could the Lakers. The problem I have is that the Lakers have waited numerous times for players, big stars, big names, and have gotten burnt on several occasions. Paul George, right? They didn't go and trade Paul George because they figured like, why are we going to give up a bunch of assets when we could just sign him in free agency? The Thunder end up trading for him, and he ends up staying with the Thunder. Kawhi Leonard was coming to the Lakers. All the reports were like, it's pretty much in the works, right? It's coming to L.A. And he was going to, he absolutely was going to, until the Clippers were able to go and trade for Paul George. And then he goes and signs with the Clippers, and the Lakers missed out on a bunch of other assets and pieces and stuff that they could have gotten because they were waiting for Kawhi Leonard. So it's like, are you kind of doing the same thing, hoping that Donovan Mitchell becomes available? Now, if there isn't anything on the table right now that makes sense, Right, if there's nothing that really is like a huge impact trade, then you know you don't want to just you don't want to just make a trade just to make a trade. And now you gave up all your assets. All these teams are trying to fleece you. It's an absolute mess. And now you are just as bad, if not worse, post trade. But you just gave up a bunch of assets for no reason. That I can understand, and that is something that you know I've talked about and made the the argument for um, in, in past videos and live streams and stuff. So it is very interesting now. As far as Trey Young goes, look, Trey Young is a great player. I personally think the Lakers should stay as far away from Trey Young as possible. Now, again, he's 25 years old. You can make the argument, man, Trey Young and Anthony Davis post LeBron James would be excellent. Trey Young, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis would be really good. You go get a guy that could just put it in the bucket, right? Leading the league in assists, guy that can make some plays, go give you, you know, 27 a game, give you. 11 assists, 11, 12 assists. Um, he's undersized, but man, his impact, I get all those things. But I just think that, one, again, how does he look alongside LeBron James when Trey Young is one of the highest usage players ever? <laughs> like the guy is constantly having the ball in his hands. So is he going to, is, is LeBron going to be willing to just kind of let him dominate the basketball the way he does at times? Right, he has been a little more. Willing, especially playing alongside DeJounte Murray. Maybe he would playing alongside LeBron. Maybe uh, Trey Young would be more okay with playing off ball and saying, okay, you know what? Like, you know, I'm playing with LeBron James, right? I'm not playing with DeJounte. I'm playing with LeBron James. That is always a possibility. But defensively, that could be a liability. Um, he's not like, for a guy that shoots nine threes a game, he's not some like super elite three-point shooter. He's never had a year where he shot better than 38% from three. Now, I'm not saying 38% is bad or anything, but this year he's shooting 36%. Last year he shot 33.5%. The the year before that, 2021-2022, he shot was the year he shot 38%. Um, But then it was 34%, 36%, and 32%. So he's not this like super elite three-point shooter. Yes, he can hit it from anywhere on the court, and when he's on... I mean, he's up there with the best of them as far as scoring goes. That guy can light it up, right? That guy will drop 30 on you on any given night. Um, Scoring-wise, yes, I I love the idea of him. But if you watch Trey Young play and you watch him play regularly, which I do, he's a guy that, yes, he can completely by himself win you a game, right? I mean, when he's on, he will just... He could just take over, and you're just like, wow, this guy's ridiculous. But I have seen so many games where he just completely shot his team out, and they actually lost the game because of Trey Young. And that happens a lot. And a lot of times it is kind of one or the other, right, with him. And, you know, him being undersized, I just, I don't see Trey Young being your first or second best player and winning the championship. Now, alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Maybe that changes, but this is just me personally. I think the Lakers should stay away from Trey Young. Um, if he if he comes, I'm not going to be upset about it. I mean, he is an excellent player, right? And on paper, it would be ridiculous, right? Trey Young, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. You you'd have Jared Vanderbilt. 
to supplement the defense. If you keep Cam Reddish, you go Cam. I mean, you could go Trey Young, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Cam Reddish, Jared Vanderbilt to kind of make up for the lack of size and uh, defense from Trey Young, and you'd be fine offensively just because what Trey Young can create, what Trey Young can score, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I, I would have no worries in that regard, but I just, I just feel like it would, like. You might win a lot of games. You might be a lot of fun to watch. I don't know if it translates to actual like championships is my concern. But regardless, like whatever the Lakers do, what I would like to see is bare minimum make trades around the edges that are upgrades but don't cost you first round picks. There's lots of players right now that are available that teams want first for right now, but that doesn't mean that they're going to get them. And also, you look at, like, Terry Rozier. He went for an expiring contract and a heavily protected first, right? So, you know, that that may work in the Lakers' favor as far as trades right now go. Um, but even a lot of these guys, like, even, like, a Bruce Brown or something like that, right? Like, they, they, the, the Raptors want, like, a first-round pick or, like, a quality player or whatever, yeah, that's what they want right now, but come trade deadline, all of a sudden it becomes like two seconds, right? So maybe you can get somebody like that for like two seconds, or you know, I, I don't, I don't hate the idea of the Lakers, you know, going and getting a Dorian Finney-Smith, or you know, go getting an Andre Drummond, or maybe you get both. Right? Go get a couple pieces, especially if you don't have to give up a bunch of firsts, to where you still have flexibility come the offseason. You upgraded in some areas. You got some pieces that make sense for now and the future. And let's say you do get a Donovan Mitchell, then you're that much better. Right? Imagine if they got like a Dorian Finney Smith and, you know, uh, uh, Miles Bridges and a, you know, Andre Drummond, right? All three of those guys collectively. None of those guys probably warrant a first come trade deadline. Maybe Dorian Finney-Smith, but I I think push comes to shove, you'll probably be able to get him for like two seconds. So basically, let's say you trade four seconds to get all those guys, those three guys. Well, now you have those three guys, and then if you go and pull off the trade for Donovan Mitchell, now you have those three guys plus like Jared Vanderbilt plus LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and let's say Donovan Mitchell for argument's sake. So now you got your big three, plus you still got like six or seven guys deep. So you could go, you know, a starting five of like Donovan Mitchell, Dorian Finney-Smith, Miles Bridges, uh, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. Again, just using guys as an example. So I would still like to see the Lakers do some moves, but maintain the flexibility to then go make the the home run trade in the offseason, if it's even there. Um, or go make, go make the big home run trades now. Go get DeJounte Murray, and then go get various other pieces make the push for this season and for the future. And then if Donovan Mitchell or whatever becomes available and you don't have the assets to trade for him, then you don't have the assets to trade for him. You're probably not getting them regardless. So I just, to me, one in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? If you, if you have the opportunity to get, you know, two, three, four pieces that make sense and can allow you to compete now, I'd rather you do that than just go wait and see. But look, the Lakers have a lot of questions, especially this off season. Right, what are they going to do with Darvin Ham if the Lakers underachieve? Right, what are they going to do here at this trade deadline? Are they going to make a big move? Are they going to make a big trade? Is it going to be a smaller trade and they just wait till the offseason? Right, there's a lot of different directions in which the Lakers can go. Rob Palinka is doing his due diligence on all of it. He's got his work cut out for him, that's for sure. So we'll see. Time will tell. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, do you like the idea of going and getting a Donovan Mitchell or a Trey Young? Do you think that they should wait? Do you think, no, it's too risky. Go get somebody now. Go get a Murray, whatever. Um, again, how are you feel? What are your thoughts are? Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below.